My guest is Tamea Spitka. She teaches at the Rava Institute in Israel. Welcome to the show, Tamea. Thank you. Uh, now, you work on mediation, and that's part of your profession, and you teach it as well. Uh, the peace process is clearly a problem of mediation. If you were assessing the situation now, generally, uh, what would you say it's like, the peace process? Is there any prospect, none? Well, I mean, there's an overwhelming pessimism out there, uh, of course. On um, both sides. I yes, think. and, and uh, I mean, particularly in Israel. I, I think that there is um, an opportunity now. Um, what would you say the f factors are that give you an opportunity? Well, for one thing, the United States isn't engaged. Um, and, and that hadn't happened um, to such an extent in the Bush administration. I mean, I think um, uh, Americans, the Obama administration is very much engaged and uh, the George Mitchell has started at least the proxy talks. So that's, that's the beginning of, of, uh, of, of something as well. I mean, for, I think for a process to succeed, um, it, you, it, it's unlikely to happen within any kind of negotiation. There's been too many too many years of hostility. Um, the narratives are too far apart uh, for the two sides um, to sit down um, uh, t together to try and resolve the conflict. So you really need a third party um, to try and to help the process. Um, well, third parties play different roles. I mean, they're adjudicators, mediators. Enforcers, yes. what role do you see the Americans play? Well, I would like to see the Americans play a more positive role than they have in the present and in the past. Um, uh, during the Camp David, uh, the Americans, I think, played. Uh, and in, in terms of, uh, if you look at any mediation textbooks um, um, and and any uh, sort of rules of, of mediation. Um, and, and then you compare it to what happened at Camp David. It was probably one of the worst processes designed. Why, why would you say it was one of the worst? I don't <laughs> have that sense at all. Um, well, for one thing, I mean, there's certain rules uh, in mediation. Uh, one is, is that, at the very least, the mediator should be in charge of the process. Um, and uh, what happened in Camp David was, was the Americas and Setchley, because of their confidence in Barack, and, and that confidence may have been a well-placed confidence, um, they really let go of the process. Um, for, I, I for don't see why you say that, because in my analysis, that isn't what went wrong. What went wrong is a, there's a change of mind at the last minute by Arafat. Yeah, and that's, that's so, I, I think, mean, the general impression Well, out it's there. not just an impression. It's based yeah. on empirical right. research. Well, I mean, because he had agreed to the deal, he had agreed to the refugee return, and then changed his mind. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the blame was placed on Arafat, certainly. Um, um, but I think if, if you look at um, the writings um, of, of the people who were there at Camp David, in, including Dennis Ross, yeah, right. um, and, and, uh, and, and even if you look at his book, um, and, and he essentially gives, puts the blame on Arafat, right. as did the Clinton administration, you, you can still see references to what actually happened there, which, which was... Um, um, that uh, you know, Barack came in and, and said, "Well, after um, five days of negotiations, uh, we'll, we'll, I mean, first few days, we'll do nothing." For example, that was like one, one example, um, and uh, and uh, the Clinton administration went okay. They gave in to Barack's demands, or, or uh, it, it, there were certain proposals uh, that Barack had made. Uh, for example. Um, he, uh, he, he didn't want anything written down, um, or he wanted to see everything before it was presented to Arafat. Um, and, and so um, the, the mediators basically showed one, one of the sides, all of the documents, before they were presented um, to Arafat. That was his demand, and, and Clinton administration said okay to the demand. But the, what happened was, um, was uh, that not only did they see it, they changed it. Um, and, and so, uh, and, you know, these parameters were, were shown to uh, the Barack team, they were changed, and then they were, and then they were given to Arafat. And, and so, unfortunately... Did, did they affect anything? What they affected How was the they... trust factor. I mean, because Arafat already came into the mediation feeling, um, well, um, 
this, you know, that th this process was unfair and the American administration was biased. And, and it, it, unfortunately, uh, the Americans didn't manage to, um, to overcome that. And, and in fact, they, they added to it by, but, by, but by giving see, I... it to the process. They, 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 uh, they, they helped to destroy whatever trust was, 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 was there. Um, but it, it's unfortunate. I mean, it's but I don't think it was the key factor. I mean, I think the key factor was, I mean, he has agreed, and then he gets in a, in a plane. They change the locale from Cyprus to Sweden. They, when, when there was different constituency group to go to Cyprus, when they decided to go to Sweden, they put on a hawk who doesn't want an agreement, talks to him, and Arafat is susceptible to listening to the last person to talk to him from my own talks with them. So I don't think that's relevant. But anyway, let's go on to the current kind of situation because the role of a mediator in the Obama administration, you, you seem to be cheering on a much more uh, involved process, but that involved process can be uh, various degrees. You can be much more actively engaged as a mediator, but you can also be much more coercive about it. You can put your own plan forward. Which scenario do you see uh, being the most viable one? Um, well, I, I'm not sure coercion is, is uh, something that's helpful. At the same time, I think uh, continuous engagement, I think, is, is, uh, is fundamental. Um, and and one, of, one of the elements, I mean, I think uh, in terms of international intervention, is, is that it really what needs to happen is that it needs to be a joint intervention. And I think, um, I mean. You're clarifying what you mean by joint? Yeah, it, what, what, I, what I mean is that um, it would be very helpful if all parties are acting on, on the same playing field. I mean, there's a general agreement to what um, is needed to end the conflict. And I think if you look at um, any of the conflicts that have been resolved um, in Northern Ireland or in Bosnia or in South Africa um, or in, in Mozambique. In, in all of them, um, when the conflicts were, were raging um, or were, when they were uh, quite uh, volatile, uh, what was happening was, was different external players were intervening um, on behalf of different sides. Um, and then what made the switch, for example, in Northern Ireland was, um, was when um, England and, um, and Ireland started to be, act on, on the behalf uh, more neutrally and, and more jointly. Um, so that's what I mean by jointly. And the same thing that happened in Bosnia, uh, where there was an international intervention more in a joint fashion this way, uh, this time in a partisan fashion against the Serbs because the Serbs were not behaving very uh, well or they were behaving very aggressively um, in, uh, throughout the war. Um, I, and, and I would hardly call it mediation. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, it, it's, a, it's a form of, it, it goes beyond mediation right, right, because, I mean, it, the diplomatic, in, in, yes, in, in this case it involved bombing, of course, um, but, but, uh, but behind there was, while the bombing was happening, there was also mediation taking place. In any case, the, internet, the intervention took place in a joint manner. Um, and I think you have, I mean, this is where the hope comes in, is in, in, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is that you have a situation where uh, there is an increasing common agreement on how to intervene. There's, there's the quartet, um, uh, which, which is functionally more under um, the Obama administration than it was under Bush administration because it's very divided. You have the Arab Peace Initiative, um, which uh, in principle all of these um, elements are creating a situation where you have uh, the external interveners uh, behaving in a more united fashion and, so, and, and, and in principle in a more neutral fashion. And I think one of the problems with, with this conflict is that there's always been a partisan divided intervention. I mean, different sides intervene on behalf of different parties, which what essentially happens is they fuel the conflict, right? When you have Arabs, uh, for, you know, uh, some members of the Arab League um, arming the militants, obviously they're adding fuels. And when, and when you have uh, Americans acting in a partisan fashion, supporting Israel at all costs, 
and uh, irregardless of its behavior, it's, it's once again uh, that you have the sides fueling the conflict as opposed to um, acting in a more neutral fashion. That's that. You have to say thank you. That's, uh, it. that's it. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> that was very fast. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome.